Hello, Facebook Live. Good morning. It is Friday morning, um, 8.15. Um, I've been sitting here in the booth at the restaurant doing a bunch of work. Got my computer here, drinking my vitamin C water. Um, Got to keep my immune system up, right? Got my regular water here that I'll drink for the rest of the day. Um, I got my vitamin C water, boosting my immune system, staying healthy, going out for a run here in a few minutes. As soon as I um, type a little bit more here, so I've been sitting at this booth here in the restaurant all morning, um, going through um, some reviews and typing back some responses, and almost every review that we're, I'm answering is a great review. We really, really, really appreciate um, all the fantastic reviews that everybody gives us. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and of course, we're not perfect. We are not perfect, and we do make mistakes, and we do screw up, um, and we do get bad reviews. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about that. Uh, yesterday on my personal Facebook page, I posted a review that somebody left, another re another previous restaurant owner, former restaurant owner, um, left me a, a bad one-star review. Um, I haven't spoken to this guy in 15 years because I didn't like him 15 years ago and he sent me some threatening emails. He actually sent threatening emails to Jamie, um, which is very upsetting. Um, just one of those people that, you know, just, um, um, thinks he's all high powered and almighty and all this kind of stuff. And I disassociated with him 15 years ago. And he actually came to my restaurant to eat. While I was out having dinner with Jamie um, last month, Jamie and I have been working our butts off since COVID happened. Um, especially the first 12 weeks, it was nonstop, seven days a week. Um, get up as early as we can, do work, 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 and at eight o'clock, sit down and have a glass of wine, eat 30, sit down and have a glass of wine and relax until uh, we have to do it the next day. Um, so this guy had come in um, about four weeks ago or so, and I was, Jamie and I were away having dinner. I think we were in Connecticut or Hudson, New York or something, and my staff called me and goes, do you know this guy? I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, what in the world is he doing? He, like, he came in to eat, and I could just imagine him coming in to eat what was going to be. So I posted a little story on my, on my personal Facebook about that. Um, I'm answering some other reviews, and like I said, all the reviews are pretty much always awesome, and we appreciate that. If you don't have a good experience here, let us know. It's as simple as that. We're not perfect. I'm not, not going to say that we're perfect. We screw up. There's a lot of different things that happen in a restaurant that, you know, it's just, it's like an airplane. An airplane has a series of like 300 checks, checklists to make sure that plane's going to get off, fly, land, everything. The restaurant is just as complicated. If the delivery doesn't show up, if the steaks show up the wrong size, if the wrong, if something goes bad, if, if somebody in the staff, if, if a, even a staff member's 10 minutes late, it throws off the rhythm, rhythms of everything. Um, if you have a guest that makes a phone call and keeps the, the hostess or the server on, or the bartender on for three, four, five minutes extra because they're asking tons and tons of questions, which isn't wrong. Things, there's, so many, there's so many things that can throw off something uh, in a restaurant. And um, it just seems like it's a constant, like, okay, let's get this done, let's recover from this, let's do this. And, and we, do, we do a great job of that, but we're not perfect. So if you ever get food here that is not up to our standards, your standards, let us know. We are happy to, um, we're happy to fix it. We have 100% uh, guarantee on our food, satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, we'll fix it, or you don't pay for it, simple as that. But here's what most people do. Most people will tell you, and I'm, I've been guilty of this too, right? I've been, people, the server will come to the table and and um, say, how is everything? You're like, fine, fine. Because it's just, it's a natural response just to say fine. Don't say fine. Say, you know what? Um, the salmon was a little overcooked tonight. Um, I ate it anyway. It was good. It was just, I thought, thought you'd let you know. Because we're the first place they'll say, well, I'll buy you dessert or something. This, that. If, if the food's not edible, we're totally going to fix it, right? We're, we're the, this isn't what I ordered. Totally, totally fix it. But I think just the human nature is just to just not to avoid to avoid the confrontation. But then what happens is some of these people become insane and they go online later and they totally bash a place, whether it's a restaurant, a hair salon, a retail store, a car wash, whatever. They go online and totally bash a place when they actually had an opportunity to say something when they were in there and hopefully get it resolved. Um. I love review sites. I think review sites are great. Um, but there, I think there's a proper way to go about um, writing a bad review. And a lot of places merit a bad review. I've written bad reviews. But here's my, here's my, the way I write a bad review. If I were to go online and bash 
another restaurant, another, another store, something, whatever, um, here's what I would do. I would first mention it to the management. Whether I mention it while I'm in the restaurant that day or I call the restaurant the day later, two days later, I would actually want to talk to the manager and say, you know what, I just had this meal or I'm having this meal, I'm trying to eat this meal or I ate there last night and um, here are my issues with what had happened. Um, no, I don't expect much. I don't expect you to send me a $100 gift card. I don't, I don't expect any of that. You know, if you want to buy me a drink when I come in the next time, it's totally fine. And, and most restaurants would probably do something like that. Um, I've, but I've actually been to restaurants here in the Hudson Valley where, you know, I've said, no, this dish wasn't what I was expecting. You wrote grilled vegetables and the vegetables are this small coming out. The carrots are this small. The carrot would never fit on a grill. And the outside of this plate is all burnt and charred and the inside and I said, and this is a true story, by the way, a very nice restaurant here. That's my very nice, expensive restaurant. And I said to the manager, I said, um, this, these aren't grilled vegetables. These are broiled vegetables. You took the vegetables and you stuck them on a, in a sizzle plate in some kind of pan and you put them underneath the salamander, underneath the broiler. Um, the menu said grilled vegetables. When I envisioned grilled vegetables, I told the manager, I said, when I envisioned grilled vegetables, I uh, would imagine a nice piece of portobello a nice um, piece of uh, zucchini, some onions, big pieces, grill marks, you know, and then the balsamic vinegar, the olive oil, what, the, the herbs, and and I said that's what the that the dish led to me to believe on the menu. But then out comes this plate of all these small vegetables, and the vegetables were indeed their sautéed vegetable mix that they take and they just put in a, put in a sizzle plate. Sizzle plate's a term for um, a pan that we or any any kind of pan. You just pop it into a, something that has heat above it, and it sits in there, and then you just slid it out and put it on there, and, which caused the outsides to, to char more. But there were little tiny vegetables that would have never even fit on a grill. And I, I said to the manager, I said, these, these aren't really grilled vegetables. He goes, this is the way we do it here. And, the, and he like got offensive with me. As opposed to just saying to me, you know what, you're right, those really aren't grilled vegetables, you know, this or that. Or, you know, I didn't even eat, I barely ate the dish because it, just, it, it wasn't what I expected. And once, once, once you're in a restaurant and you don't get what you expect, for example, like if a price is too high and you're like, man, this is why am I paying, why am I paying 34 bucks for scallops tonight? Um, I, I I don't believe that. Once you tell yourself that, and that goes into your brain. It's hard for the rest of the night to go to go to go to go um, to go smooth because you've already put something into your brain about well, you know, why am I doing this to begin with? Or this seems expensive, or this or that, or or the way the the way the the hostess looked at me. The way the bartender greeted me or didn't greet me or the, the you know, like this, as soon as something happens and something triggers, it's harder to, to have a better experience. It's just our human nature. So, um, this restaurant in Newburgh, um, this very nice restaurant, they, I didn't eat the vegetables. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was like, you know what? But they still charged me for it. They still totally charged me for it. I didn't write a bad review, but I called the owner. I called the owner. I said, and I told him what was happening. And I know the owner. And I'll follow up with you, I'll call back. Never call me back, never call me back. I'll speak to my manager and this and that, never call me back. And a few years before I was at the same restaurant and the halibut came out extremely overcooked. There's only four people in the restaurant, Jamie and I and the couple we're with and the restaurant's empty, it's nine o'clock at night. Halibut comes out overcooked. Everybody finishes eating their food. I'm just like moving my food around. After they come clear off the table, then they finally ask me, is everything, is there, how was everything? I'm like, well, I didn't eat anything. And again, it's like, it's, a, it's an issue to, to get the food like fixed or anything like that. But we're the only people in the place, only people in the place, and the server could have came up, we call it quality checking. And again, folks, we're not perfect. By any means, we're not perfect, but you need to give a restaurant an opportunity. You need to give the business owner, the business manager an opportunity. Then if you don't like their response, and you feel that they've done nothing to rectify it, then go, go, go right on the internet. Go post on Yelp, go post on TripAdvisor, do what you have to do. We don't open our doors here every day and say, how many people are we going to piss off today? How many people, how many one-star reviews can we get today? And how many people can we piss? We don't do that. None, the staff doesn't come to work thinking that. But there's so many moving parts to a restaurant or any business that when one thing goes wrong, it's a chain, it's a domino effect, and other things go wrong. For example, you put food up in the kitchen window, the window's the, 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 the hotline there, and you put two dish, two tables up simultaneously, the tickets get mixed up, and all of a sudden, the burger goes to the wrong table, the salmon goes to the other table, the people start eating it, and even when it goes out to the, to the table and gets sit down, we, 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 don't, we don't reserve the food. Like, like, for example, like, you ever notice you sit down and you're at a restaurant and, the, and the, they drop off a salmon dish in front of you, you're like, well, I, I didn't order salmon. 
so then they pick it up. Well, that dish goes somewhere. That dish typically goes to the person who ordered it at another table, right? We don't do that. We've never done that. Once the food hits the table and it's the wrong food, we recook the dish. So now that throws, that throws the kitchen rhythm off big time. And it's an honest mistake. We're busy. Things are happening. It's an honest mistake. But that throws the kitchen rhythm off drastically because now I have to cook another salmon. We have to cook and you have to really cook two new tables over because if the food went out simultaneously to the wrong table, two tables are in question now and food gets cooked over. Um, but, you know, these are things that throw the service off 15 minutes. You don't throw those two tables off. You throw every table off after that. And again, we're not perfect. We're happy to fix and we do, we do try to fix. But I'm just, I'm sitting here this morning, Mike, mind boggled to read some of these things. Like here's, here's a review that was left on Facebook. Um, we had gone to Aroma Time anniversary for our 20, for our anniversary on July 25th, hoping to have a nice meal. But instead we're given a very overpriced meal that was mediocre at best. So here's something they weren't expecting to pay the prices they paid. They're used to going somewhere else. A salmon, a wild, truly caught wild salmon dish for $16 is overpriced to them. Um, although you can go to another restaurant and but get toxic farm salmon, um, you know, for the same price or more, but they're just not used to going to that. So something can triggered right away. And now since it's overpriced, nothing's gonna be good because that's what's triggering. So the lobster was cooked ahead of time. Um, of course the lobster was cooked ahead of time. Every single restaurant I've worked at, even the Greenbrier in West Virginia, the Greenbrier in West Virginia, Pierre Kaufman's La Tante Claire, Michelin three-star restaurant in Europe, one of the 25 best restaurants at the time, the best chefs, best chefs, a person who trained Gordon Ramsay and Marco Pierre White. The lobsters are cooked ahead of time. But see, here's something that, that, that there, there was, they put this person, this person focused in on one thing, a price, the price is being too high. So now every, there's an issue for everything going all along. So the lobsters cooked ahead of time. Folks, you have to cook lobster ahead of time. Do, if, unless you're, unless you're a restaurant with a, a holding tank, one of those big lobster tanks, as soon as the lobster comes into the restaurant, sitting inside the boxes and goes into the cooler, the lobster starts stressing. And that's where, you know, every now and then you get lobster where the meat just falls apart inside, falls apart. The lobster was very stressed. The meat was compromised. Um, the lobster probably died before it was cooked. If I were to buy 100 lobsters on Thursday, let them sit in my walk-in cooler and, and cook them to order as we go along all weekend, Half those lobsters are gonna be dead by Sunday. It, you're gonna have a terrible experience. The key to getting getting lobster is less stress on the lobster, cooking it as soon as it comes in and not letting it sit around. And then you do the reheat process. But again, this person, and we're, we're not like that at home, right? Nobody nobody does that at home. You go to the store, you go to ShopRite, you go to Hannaford's, you go to the fish market, you go to Sally's Fish Market, wherever you go, and you get lobster and you bring it home and you, and you cook it, you cook it as a, that day and you need to eat it that day, right? You cook it and then you eat it. So this threw, this threw this person off that why the lobsters and there's no hiding it because we do our lobster bake outside and I literally have 30 cooked lobsters ready to rock and roll on ice right there, rock and roll to go. So of course now here's another thing. So this person goes on Facebook and just decides to blast us and then all these other people go online and, and, and are like, well, you know, you need to go to this restaurant or that restaurant. You can't compare prices to other restaurants. It's impossible to compare each restaurant prices, um, especially ours. Um, every single restaurant owner that comes into Aroma Time, and I just had this happen again last week, another restaurant owner came in and said, he was Marcus, raise your prices. You're way too cheap. And I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to offer a value right now during COVID. I'm really trying to offer a value. I'm trying to move through products. I'm, he goes, Marcus, you're too cheap. I, I, I could never, the products you're buying and paying those prices for, real wild salmon, three times the price of rainbow salmon. He goes, that's 16 bucks on your menu. He goes, what are you thinking? He goes, your, your, your grass-fed ribeye steak, 19.90. He goes, what are you thinking? And he's like, being, he's being as a friend, but he's like, Marcus, what in the world are you thinking? Your lobster bake's 25 bucks. He goes, I would have paid 35 bucks tonight and been totally happy and said I got a good deal. He goes, I would have paid more for the salmon. I would have paid, but we're trying to offer a great value, but again, once somebody has something in their head about something when you go into a place, the rest of the time can be a down, downhill experience unless the wait staff or somebody can save it and this or that. But if you don't say anything, of course. So of course, to, turn, to, and to, to, to really add more to this, this person actually, I think you're a local teacher at our Ellenville school. Um, so it's just, it's just crazy. Like, like not to say anything and then go in your community and bash, bash somebody is insane. 
I got a Yelp one star review a couple weeks ago that I'm in the process of uh, um, responding to right now. The guy had legitimate complaints in there, and I fixed the I fixed what was in question. His steak was overcooked. His steak was overcooked. I went back into the kitchen and I cooked. It was out on the streets. Um, he complained that the steak was overcooked. So I saw it. I'm outside cooking the lobster. The lobster bake. I went in the kitchen myself and cooked it to make sure it was right. Because our one team member said, you know, he's a little upset, this and that. And I said, yeah, I can see. So I went and fixed it. And I said to my team member, I said, how is he now? Oh, he's fine now. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. I said, you sure? He goes, no, no. I smoothed it over. He's okay. As the guy leaves... He says to our server, he goes, I'm going to nail you guys online in a review. And by the time he came to get me, the guy was stumbling down the street. And he goes, like, the guy was just so mean and nasty. And I'm going to go online and give you guys a bad, terrible review and this and that. His legitimate complaints were his, his ribeye was overcooked. We're not perfect. I went in myself and recooked it for him. So I was in the kitchen for 10 minutes while this thing was cooking. He said the oysters weren't served cold enough. We fixed that problem, totally fixed that problem. It was just like the first weekend we were doing them stuff outside. Um, we have now a system to have plenty of ice, have them submerged. And I, we did have a system then, but it just wasn't, it wasn't as good as it is now. So I took that advice and said, okay, I can improve. My fault. All right, if you got an oyster that wasn't cold enough, I'd comp the oyster. No problem. But he didn't say this until afterwards. And then all of a sudden went on and bashing us and saying how five people spent $200 and was over. And it was very, very expensive. Five people, $200. This person, this person, as I went back and looked at the cameras, because we, we have cameras, every restaurant has camera system. So I want to go back, because they said the food took an hour. It never took an hour. It took 35 minutes at best, and we have it all on camera. But people's perception, once one thing's wrong, their perception is triggered, and it's just insane the way everything else falls into place. So it turns out he had five beers at 8% alcohol. When he got up to leave... His wife, somebody had to help the guy walk. He was that inebriated. He was, and this is, explains to why he got so nasty at the end. Just got really nasty. So he waited a day or so and then went online and just totally bashed us. But he, he, the guy gets inebriated. $200 for five people, that's $40 a person. You had five beers alone. You had five beers alone. In a normal restaurant, those beers are $8. That's $48. The math just, I mean, if you just look at it, the math is like you got a bargain for five people for $200. Our beers are five dollars. The same beer, the Slip Juice Bomb, because we lowered prices. I want to give a good value during COVID. I, I, you know, I just want to be fair as we had to move volume and, and make things happen. So, um, and I'd love to make three dollars more for every single beer we sell. Two hundred pints a week of this beer. If I charge three dollars more a pint, that's six hundred dollars more in my pocket. That pays my staff. Um, that pays one person in the kitchen all week. Um, so. I would love to charge $3 more a pint for that, but I, I, I'm still making money at $5 a pint and I want to offer a good value. Um, there might be a point where we might have to bump our prices back up at a certain point, but for now, we're okay on certain things. So we, the more we run financials, month to month financials, we'll, we'll see how the trends are and I'm um, very into numbers. So the guy goes online and bashes us. He can barely walk out of here. He does have two legitimate complaints. I would have totally comped the oysters if given, if, 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 if given the opportunity to do. And I went and recooked the steak to make it right. So, and then he tells, he tells the server, everything's fine, everything's fine. And then at the last possible second when he gets up, I'm gonna nail you guys online. He went on Yelp and he went on another website and totally just nailed us. And it's like, folks, we thought we fixed the problem. Our server thought he fixed the problem. I thought I fixed the problem. I went in, I did it, I did this, I did that. It, again, we're not perfect. Wherever you go, Give the business a chance. Nowhere does it say that you know his re that I, the chef went in and, and 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 cooked this and cooked that. It's like it's like one of these when you go and read read these bad reviews. It's they're so biased. And most people can see right through them. Most people I, to respond to these things is just like insane sometimes. You know to say that we're an expensive restaurant when we pay three times more for our rice, three times more for our salmon. Um, our salt is ten times the price where other restaurants pay for salt. The oil that we cook with is 60 bucks a jug, not 15 bucks a jug. Um, the organic olive oil that we use is higher, everything we use is higher price across the board. And I'm looking at, well, my salmon's the same price as any other salmon in town here, and the organic ingredients went to it, the good salt went into it, the better this, the better that, and it's three times the price, and it's, it's the same as, so again, it's, sometimes I blame myself for this. I totally blame myself because I feel I advertised to the wrong person. I advertised to a person that, and there's nothing wrong with with 
McDonald's or other, there's nothing wrong with it. That's what, the, the, that's what people are looking for at the moment. That's fine, it f f fills the need. But it's like, it's like advertising, I guess, a um, Mercedes to somebody um, that drives a Chevy and they get them into the Chevy. Here's, 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 here's a great example. Here's a fantastic example. When I was in Colorado, I was executive chef, the first place I was executive chef at the country club. They did a large membership drive, massive membership drive in this community. And the way, this was a constant complaint, the way that they advertised it, the pricing structure, this, that, and everything, they misled a lot of people that really couldn't afford to be a country club member. They misled people, got people there for open houses, got them to sign, and then all of a sudden there was like, oh, well, yeah, of course you have a minimum for, um, for the restaurant every month. Of course you have this, of course this and all this is extra. So they did this huge, they, they literally had a line. I, I remember the day they did this membership drive, these open houses, and they signed up a lot of people that didn't understand what a country club was because they advertised the wrong group. Then all of a sudden they had a backlash two months later, three months later, four months later, if all these people were like, 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 I didn't know that I had these obligations, I had this, this, they advertised the wrong group. And I learned that lesson a long time ago. So sometimes I feel like maybe my, my message that I'm doing personally, and I take responsibility, is getting to the wrong people. It's somebody who's looking for people that don't care about if their salmon's to a farm raised toxic salmon. They don't care if their beef is from a massive IBB plant in Iowa or Illinois or wherever, um, where the cattle are sold, but they don't care anything about that. And sometimes maybe it's my fault for doing that. So I take responsibility. I do like to market and I do like to get our message out and I do like to, um, somebody, somebody actually had, had sent me a comment before. Can I give you a good Yelp review today? Folks, do not give me a good Yelp review today. <laughs> don't, um, Yelp will flag it. Yelp will flag it. I've gotten several good Yelp reviews the last couple of days. If a lot of people go in at one time, Yelp will flag it. Wait a couple of days. Um, it's just Yelp's, Yelp's algorithm that they do. So if, if literally, if 15 people went online today and gave me all five-star Yelp reviews, Yelp would be like, what's Marcus doing? Is he paying somebody? So somebody had sent me a message. I'll go give you, don't, don't all go, don't all go on a rush and give me Yelp reviews. It'll actually, it'll actually be a detriment to my Yelp reviews. It'll actually probably drop me down. It's crazy. It's crazy how Yelp works. So besides having insane people coming in sometimes, um, we're dealing with Yelp, which is just as insane. So, um, I just saw, I can see some comments coming in. Sorry folks, I'm on my phone, I'm not on my computer today. Um, hardest part is to please everyone, absolutely. And I know we can't please everybody. Um, so, never had a complaint. Folks, if you ever have a complaint here, if you ever have an issue, mention it to us. Totally mention it to us, please. I am happy to fix it, do something, do something. We're not perfect, and again, folks, there's no restaurant owner that wakes up in the morning and goes, let's go get that one star review today. Let's try to piss off that one person. Let's overcook a steak. Things just happen. Some restaurant owners are better than making sure it doesn't happen than others. And others, you know, just, just put the systems they've set up or their personal standards. When we first opened, I had a chef um, in the beginning years. I had a chef um, and a well done steak comes in. He's sitting there burning the steak, burning. This is like chef with years of experience, burning the steak. I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm cooking a well done. I'm like, no, no, that's burnt. He goes, it's well done. I go, no, no, that's, that steak is burnt. The ticket says well done. He goes, yeah, but that's all the same difference. I said, no, 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 it's not the same difference. It's totally not the same difference. Well done and burnt. And I said, and I put it aside. I cooked the steak, well done. I go, now look at the two. The appearance is different. If they want it burnt, they'll order it burnt. They do not order it burnt, they order it well done. Give them the respect of, give them, here's a chef with 20 years experience who's done this in all the restaurants he's worked in probably, and, and will continue to do it to this day. And, and so some restaurant owners or some chefs just understand, understand or have, have more of a perception for customer satisfaction or understanding the, the basics. When I was in Colorado and I was the chef at, at, at the One Country Club, I was 24 years old, they gave me the chef job. Everybody who worked for me was older. My sous chef was older. Um, uh, they promoted me to executive uh, food director within my first few months there because I guess I was doing a good job. Um, they fired the um, food and beverage director, promoted me, so I had a, um, an executive sous chef, a sous chef, dining room manager, bar manager that all reported to me. And um, I remember going to the kitchen one day and here was a chef that was 45 years old 
big experience in Colorado, Colorado Springs, big experience in all the hotels, you know, and he pulls out, uh, on the menu was, 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 was roasted pork loin. Roasted pork loin was on the menu. And he pulls it out of the oven and it's there hold, resting, holding, getting ready to serve. I look at it and I go, that doesn't look roasted, chef. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I roasted it. I said, but it doesn't look roasted. He goes, well, what do you mean? I go, look at it, it looks like it's steamed. I go, it looks like it's a steamed, there's no caramelization, there's no browning, there's nothing that pops in my eyes that says flavor. And here's a 24 year old explaining to a 45 year old who has 20 more years experience in him that his stuff sucks basically in a nice way. He's like, well, I've been cooking pork. I've been I'm like, look with your eyes and be, be objective here. Look with your eyes, look at the pork. If you were to look at that and you were to look at the one that I would make, mine would look roasted. It would be nice and caramelized, nice and brown, nice flavors. You can look and start with your eyes. I said, when you pulled yours out of the oven, it looks like it went to the steamer. There's, no, there's nothing on it that says roasted pork loin. Imagine a baked potato versus a roasted potato. The difference between a baked potato versus a roasted potato is a roasted potato you coat with oil to induce browning. A baked potato, you pop in the oven, you don't induce browning, it cooks and it's soft and there you go. So roasted versus cooked. Now imagine roasted versus steamed. So here's a 24 year old explaining to a 45 year old that hey, you're, the fundamentals that you've learned, the fundamentals that you've done for the last 20, 25 years in this culinary field, no matter where you've been executive chef at, sous chef at, are lacking. And I learned this in, in culinary school. You can have 25 years experience, but if it's a wrong experience, it's a wrong experience. You have 25 years of useless experience. Now maybe that experience was useful in the place they were at, but when you go to another place, that's not useful experience. It's not valid experience. So, um, so some restaurant owners just don't have the experience or cooks or whatever don't have that experience to be able to understand the difference. And this is a common thing. Like if you work for me, if, if, if any of our staff members are on here, our team members or previous, you know that Jamie and I, especially me, attention to detail, 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 detail. It's all about the detail. I want, you know, if something's like, we'll walk around and we'll see, like some staff members might think that, oh man, you're just nitpicky, this and that, but you walk around the table and you see silverware that's not lined up. If, if, if you're, if you, if you, if you're working the restaurant field, if you work in the restaurant field and you're a server, bartender, whatever, if you walk through the dining room and a crooked fork on a table drives you crazy, you're gonna take a second look at it, third look, pick it up, straighten it. And if you pick it up and straighten it, you're also gonna notice any smudges on it. Attention, one small detail leads to another small detail. If you're a guest walking into a restaurant, again, we're not perfect, if you're a guest walking into a restaurant and you sit down to a crooked, door, dirty fork, right off the bat, right then and there, something's going wrong. You right there, something's skewed. Like to have to, to, have to and then not have a, a server attentive enough to, to say, hey, I need a new fork, it happens, and it happens here, and it happens here. It, it, it's because, again, there's a lot of moving parts. But this is how people, this is this, something like that, and then the food can be great. But if somebody has a dirty fork, they're gonna be pissed off, right? It's just part of, it's a letdown. So, um, folks, wherever you go, um, and understand that restaurants right now are serving outside, they're serving in tents, they're running food farther than they've ever run food before, Things are not, and I've talked to a lot of other restaurant owners who say, man, everybody who comes in, 99% of people who come in, 98% of people who come in are just happy to be here and happy to be out. But you have that one or 2% that are just, just insane, insane people that voices have to be heard. I have another restaurant owner, a friend of mine that, that stood up to somebody. Um, he goes, you're not gonna talk to my staff like that. He got up and goes, you're not talking to anybody here like that. We're doing our best right now to make sure, and we're busy. You're, you're gonna have a little patience. And I, I've very rarely over the years have I told people, you're not welcome here, have I told, there were one guy, I was in the kitchen cooking one night, one guy laid into Jamie big time. It was during restaurant week, during Hudson Valley restaurant week, 12, 15, 13 years ago, somebody coming in looking for a bargain, looking for that 1999 meal, and you know, I was upset that a glass of wine is 10 bucks, so now the person comes in, they're spending two glasses of wine, they're spending, didn't understand why we had to charge for bottled water. The bottled water's on the table, didn't understand, you're coming in for a 1999 three course prefix dinner and you're complaining about bottles of water being four or five bucks at the time. So he like went off and was like rude to Jamie and I came out of the kitchen and I pulled him aside and excuse me, I said, I think you left your manners outside. 
I'm gonna give you an opportunity to go to your car, get your manners, and come back into my restaurant. You're not gonna talk to my wife like that. You're not gonna do that. And if that's the way it's gonna be, you're not welcome back. It's just it, mind boggling. 1999 bargain hunter, $4 bottle of water. Of course water costs. If you order four bottles of water, what do you want me to do? Not charge you? Do you think I have a, do you think I, 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 I love this. This was years ago, one of the chefs he used to work for. He goes, you think I have a fairy here waving her hand, making a bottle of water appear for free? You think I have a fairy here waving her hand and mushrooms appear in the walk-in for free? No, everything costs money. We don't have a fairy doing that. So this guy obviously maybe thought we had a fairy doing that and then went online and complained about us bashed us to, to the Hudson Valley Restaurant Organization, to the board, bashed us, left them bad online, comment about us uh, on their thing, on their, whatever it was. And I'm like, and so I laid, I laid back into him. I totally laid back into him. But it's just, it's just crazy. One year, bef right before Thanksgiving, right, well, one year at Thanksgiving, packed, we're packed. Right here, right next to the bar, we had a guy who brought in his 94-year-old grandmother, 93, 93-year-old mother. And this guy was French, he was from France, lived in America, gone back and forth, and um, certain mannerisms, certain things you do, certain etiquette was expected by him. Um, and when he didn't get that, things went very, very downhill very, very fast um, for him. His mother's 90-something years old orders a glass of wine, and he tells her, no, you're a drunk. And so she orders another glass of wine from Jamie, and here's a 90-year-old woman out for Thanksgiving with her son, and she wants another glass of wine or more wine, and he's like, no, she's a drunk, she's a drunk, she can't, and she's like, please, I just want, I want another glass of wine. So Jamie's like, well, she wants a glass of wine, like, what do you want me to do? So Jamie gives the lady a glass of wine, she goes, no, I'm, I'm okay, I want a glass of wine. Like, you're gonna tell a 90-year-old woman you can't have another glass of wine because your son is there? So um, take her to a restaurant that doesn't have alcohol, as simple as that. So Jamie gets another glass of wine, you know, Things just went down. The guy, I walk up the stairwell, and I remember a guy hearing, F this, F that, screaming at the top of his lungs in the restaurant. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So I come out of here, and he's like screaming, like, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. So he was mad because, because the way his coat was taken. He was mad about a lot of things. I don't think it was our food and his experience. I think he was mad to begin with. Maybe he was mad he had to take his, his mom out to, to Thanksgiving. I ran into the guy the next day on Black Friday at Hunter Mountain. We're both in line together. He's in front of me. And I'm like, you were in Yellow Elmville yesterday, weren't you? And he goes, yeah, I was at your crappy restaurant. I was like, dude, what you did yesterday was so unacceptable. I was, my son was with me. I was like, what you did yesterday was so unacceptable, was so disrespectful of myself, of your mother, and of all that. I'm gonna, I'm like, just don't come back. Never come back to my restaurant. I don't care what you, just don't come, never come back to my restaurant. And it was just, it's like, these, some of these people are just insane, insane. So, um, yeah, so that's what my morning's been. My morning's been going through some of these, writing responses. Um, my general rule, when I do get a bad review, I teach this to all of our clients, all of our restaurant clients, that we teach coaching, you've gotta wait 24 hours to respond. Because when I first get a bad review, and I'm like, oh, and I wanna like fire back, the next day doesn't mean as much to me. So my emotions are, are settled down. So if you're a business owner and bad reviews like get to you, wait 24 hours, sleep on it. It's one of the best things, one of the best techniques I've ever done because I can think more level-headed. And what I try to do with these reviews is I try to put myself in their shoe because I can learn a lot from a review. I can learn a ton from a review. But I can also learn a ton when you're in here telling me what's wrong with the food. I can also learn a ton too. So no matter how you communicate your, 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 your feedback, um, whether it's an email the next day, whatever, we learn a lot. And I always try to say, let me put myself in their shoes. And there's a lot of one-star reviews that we have that are totally legitimate. I'm sorry, I'll send you your money back to you right now. You were totally right. Not what our standard service is, this, this, and this. You're totally right. I do that when people are here. I'm sorry, you're totally right. We were totally off, but every now and then you just get these people that are totally, totally, totally insane. So if you're, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can go see I posted the one review from a local guy who had, had many failing restaurants. He's in the real estate business now, but he had many, many failing restaurants um, and sent Jamie threatening emails. He was, he was gonna come down to Ellenville and kick her ass. This was years ago. He literally sent Jamie emails. I'm gonna come down to Ellenville and kick your ass. He's, I mean, Jamie's one that's responding to him back and forth, writing her name on it. And um, this is the emails that he's sending. He didn't like the fact that 
he thought I ignored him. I was in the kitchen cooking my butt off. This was years ago and I was stuck in the kitchen every night. And I was cooking my butt off. I walk out into the dining room and I'm going table to table to say hi to people, to say hi to people. I'm going table to table. Well, I sat down a few tables before him. Um, there was a wine rep in, a wine broker, another salesperson. They were in, they were entertaining. They were spending a lot of money, which doesn't really matter, but they were spending money. Um, I sat down with them. They wanted me to try, try some wine. I sat down with them, talking to them. I'm looking, I'm looking up at his table. He's still eating. He's still eating. He's eating dessert. I'm like, okay, great. I'll go say hi to him. Turns out I, I got caught up. He gets to leave, walks out my door. I run out after him and say, hey, thanks for dinner. I appreciate it. He looks at me. He goes, you, you, you don't know how to run a business. You. And he's like, go back in there with those people that are eating for free and this and that. How dare you? And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, sorry, I, I couldn't get to your table. I was in the kitchen and like went off on me. So I was like, okay, fine. Hope you never come back is what I'm saying to myself. So he's on our email list, on our email subscriber list. He must have signed up under two or three different emails. So he would just send Sam Jamie a message, please take me off your list. Instead of hitting the opt out button, he would send Jamie an email, please take me off. So the email that he sent Jamie from, the email address is what she removed from the list. So our next week, our next email blast goes out. I told you to remove me from your list, this and that. Not even telling us I have another email address or check these emails, because he had maybe a couple email addresses. I told you to remove me, this and that. And went off on an email. So he ended up getting another email. Um, if you don't fix the problem now, I'm gonna come down there and kick your ass. It's the emails he's sending to Jamie. This is insane. This is totally insane. He, this guy used to have restaurants in Sullivan County. He now is a realtor. It's on, it's on, it's on my personal Facebook page. Totally on, it's on my personal Facebook page. So he comes back in 15 years later, the other day, last week when I'm, Jamie and I are off, the very few nights we have off, and doesn't, you know, where's Marcus? Well, I'm not here. Um, it's obvious he's not here, and this and that, and, and whatever, and just, my staff is like, this guy is so nasty. Of course, goes on and leaves. Signed up for Yelp, he signs up for Yelp. First review, signs up for Yelp to give me a one-star review, and then obviously puts his full name on the review. So it's not even a secret of who the guy is. So um, I just don't have patience for these insane people. If I was here that night, if I was actually here, and he walked in the door, I would have said, because I, 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 you, know, you don't forget when somebody threatens your wife like that. You just don't forget. Um, or you. You just don't forget that kind of stuff. So I, I would have simply said, you know what? I'm sold out tonight. I have reservations here. I'm simply sold out. I don't have room for your night. Is what I would, how I would have handled it. And his wife has actually sent me a couple of friends, friend requests over the years. And I've denied them, declined them. Because I just don't want to be, I know his wife has nothing to do with his personality and things like that. And they're two different people. And I understand that. But just to even have her on my page, knowing that her husband is insane, I didn't want that. So I've just declined politely the, the, the friend requests over the years. Um, and I think even at some point somebody said that she wanted to come play here or this or that. I'm like, if she's coming to play here, she's a musician, that means just he's gonna come here. And you know, that's not, that's, not, that's not what I want. I don't want any association with this insane person. Um, so who goes on and gives me a nice one-star Yelp review. So um, folks, do me a favor, if you've had a good experience at any restaurant, any restaurant in the last month, two months, three months, six months, you've had a good experience here, go leave them a review, especially during COVID right now. Any good review helps, go leave them a good review on TripAdvisor, on Google, Google reviews are the way to go. We teach all of our business clients, our coaching clients, um, all the other restaurant owners, Google reviews is where, Google is where you want your reviews at right now, all right? Google, you know, they just control so much, you want Google reviews. Go leave a Google review, go leave a Yelp review, go leave a TripAdvisor. I've already had like four or five people that have left me Yelp reviews. Don't leave me any more Yelp reviews right now. No more Yelp reviews. Um, Yelp will flag that and then they'll, they'll, they'll think it's fishy business and, and uh, their algorithm sucks. Um, so, uh, but any restaurant, any business you've had a good experience with, anywhere you've gone, whether it's a grocery or something, just do something nice, just leave them a good review. If you can ever mention one of the team members' names in your review, it means that much more. Every time my staff, our team sees like their name, like Patrick, Cody, whoever, um, it just means that much more to them. It means that they've done their job or you've remembered their name. So that's how I like to write reviews. So I like to mention some person. If I don't know their name, I'm the person behind the bar, this or that, went out of their way. Go, whether, whether it was a local grocery store, whether it was wherever, salon, wherever, wherever you've been, just go online and drop a business. Not my business, any business. You can leave me a review if you want. 
If you had a problem, call me. We'll talk about it. We'll fix it. Um, but go online and leave somebody a good review today. Leave somebody a good review. Put some good energy out there. And again, folks, if you ever have a bad experience anywhere you go, talk to the manager first. Leave it to the manager. Do not, do not lie to their face. Do not say everything was great tonight and then go home and bash them online. Do not lie to their face. Because then you get a one star for communication. All right? That is a one star review for communication. If you tell somebody everything was fine and then turn the band their back and go do that, they, give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, some places won't care. Then go bash them. Some places don't care at all. If, but if they do care and they make it, and they make it right. These are, these are the worst reviews that, that, that people write. I've been here six times, never had a bad meal, but this time was just pathetic, this, this, and this, and they, get a, they give a one-star review. Where were the other six reviews that were five stars? This is another insane thing that people do. And this happens, it happens more often than you think. I've, had, I've been there several times, never had a bad meal, then where's that review? Where's that four-star review? Where's that five-star review? All of a sudden today, something was off. They're using cheaper ingredients and things have changed here and this and that, and they, they make a point of doing that. Odds, you know, when, when people say to us, oh, we're using cheaper ingredients, it's the contrary. We're always looking for better ingredients to use. We're always looking for higher quality. We're always looking for more sustainable, more ethical. Whether it's a to-go container um, or something else, we're always looking for more ethical, uh, sustainable, organic, local ingredients to use. And we find, every food show we go to, I find one or two new ingredients. One of the last big finds I had wasn't even a food ingredient. It was a straw. The straws that we use from Redeem are chemical free. There's no toxic glues in them. Those paper straws, we pay a lot more money for these straws. We pay like an insane amount more for these straws. So when people say that it's expensive to eat here, it just drives me because they have no idea what really goes into it. Those paper straws that you buy, that you drink at in a restaurant, that they stick into your glass, those have toxic glues in them. Do not have, do not have a restaurant put those paper straws in. Guarantee they're not buying Redeem straws like we're buying that are, that are three, four times the price because um, restaurants don't understand the purpose of that. They don't understand the health benefits. They don't understand toxic ingredients like that, which is why they buy food with all kinds of chemicals and funky stuff in it because um, it's cheaper. Those, those paper straws are cheap. There's harmful glues in there. The glues get into your beverages. Carbonated beverages will dissolve it quicker and get it into your drink quicker, all right? So... Don't use paper straws in restaurants. When, when, I, when we're at a restaurant, I say, no straw, please. No straw. All right? Those straws that we use are, are you'll see, I posted many things on it, Redeen, R-E-E-D-E-N. It's the only straw, that we, they're, they're from Germany. They're made in Germany. Um, super strict. One of the only straws that I can find that has none of these harmful, funky, funky chemicals in it. Um, so I don't know why I was even talking about straws. I was talking about ingredients. Oh yeah, I was talking about ingredients. That was my last big find at one of the food shows were these great straws. Um, so we're always looking to spend more money on better ingredients. We're not looking to, to cut corners and make, make ingredients cheaper here. We're never looking to do that. We're looking to, to, to do the right thing for the environment, for your health, for our health, um, to support businesses that are doing the right thing. So, all right folks, a lot of people tuning in today. I did not know this Facebook Live was gonna go this long. I gotta go for my run. I really gotta go for my run. Um, and uh, get some other work done. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Lobster bakes tonight, twenty four ninety nine. Um, out front, we'll be cooking the lobster bakes out front. Uh, oysters on the half shell. Uh, local, really local Hudson Valley um, organic corn now in from a farm. We were getting from Finger Lakes, from Norwich Meadows. Now we got from the farm hub, um, from a local farm. We got more shishito peppers from a local farm. All the local stuff we got in this, the local tomatoes we got in this week, all this really awesome local local produce. Um, all right, I'm out of here, folks. Talk to you later. Have a great day. If I don't uh, see you here, enjoy your weekend um, and, um, and take your vitamins, vitamin C. Keep your health going. Keep your immune system going. Wash your hands. We still have free gloves. We are still giving away free gloves. I haven't spoken about it for a while. If you want gloves, come and get a handful of gloves. We still sell boxes of gloves. If you want for like seven or eight dollars, you're a bargain. Um, but we are giving away free gloves. Uh, we're giving away free ionized water still, things like that. If anybody has any questions about the vitamin C I'm taking, message me, private message me. I'll be happy to, uh, 
to show you a lot, a lot. I get messages every week, what vitamin C are you taking and what vitamin C, I don't know, why don't I just show you what vitamin C I'm taking, uh, be easier. Um, so it's the, uh, from Life Extensions, I think Life Extensions is a great vitamin company. Um, Life Extensions, right there, see that, Life Extensions. I'm taking the effervescent vitamin C. I also have the Bronson vitamin C. I rotate back and forth, but this is the main vitamin C I take. If you take buffered vitamin C, do not take straight ascorbic acid. It screws with your stomach, especially on an empty stomach. Um, so some people are like, oh, vitamin C. Straight ascorbic acid, vitamin C, which we use in the kitchen as a way, by the way, as a preservative. Um, the buffered vitamin C's, you can consume more. All right, you can consume more at a time. I heard one of the doctors saying the other day, I don't know how true this is, but one of the doctors that I listened to was saying you can take five times the amount of buffered vitamin C versus ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid will give you the runs quicker and go through and, and, and it, it's just sometimes it's a little harsh. So buffered vitamin C is the way to go. All right. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.